When 27 children's lives were endangered by unfathomable circumstances, Nicholas Sierra sprang into action. He realized that ensuring the safety of every elementary schooler was his sole option. Despite seeming like an impossible mission, the situation became even more dire due to Nicholas's tender age of just 10 years old. It was a hot day in Tampa, Florida, with the temperature at 85 degrees. Nicholas and his friends were outside Mary E. Bryant Elementary School, waiting for their bus in the sweltering heat. Nicholas adjusted his electric green safety belt, which shone brightly in the afternoon sun. Little did he know, his life would soon be in danger. When bus 72 arrived, Nicholas, sweating profusely, felt relieved. He and his friends greeted the bus driver, Lenore, as they boarded. Lenore had recently moved back to Tampa to be closer to her family. To everyone, it seemed like just another regular school day, but things were about to take a drastic turn. Nicholas and the other fifth graders sat at the back of the bus. The seating was organized by grade, with kindergartners in the front and fifth graders at the back. The seats at the very back were highly sought after and had to be earned through seniority. Nicholas observed as the other kids filed into their seats. He was one of the children selected from the upper grades to serve as a junior safety patroller. He had pledged to direct his peers and teach them about the merits of traffic safety. Junior safety patrollers were tasked with the objective of protecting fellow students, assisting bus drivers in transporting students to and from the premises, and participating in other leadership roles. Nicholas couldn't have guessed how essential his training would prove to be. Lenore shifted into reverse and navigated the bus out of the parking lot. They made a left onto Nine Eagles Road and began to pick up speed. Outside, palm trees rushed past, and Nicholas felt his eyes beginning to grow heavy. For over two decades, Hillsborough County School Buses had been Mary E. Bryant Elementary's only method of transportation. Lenore had recently returned to Tampa after a stretch in Washington, D.C. at the time. The 64-year-old had only been a bus driver for one week. The bus cruised down Nine Eagles Road. Lenore couldn't hear much over the cacophony of the children conversing with one another, but Nicholas was jolted awake by a noise that sounded like metal on metal coming from the floor beneath his feet. The greenery outside was growing blurrier by the second as bus 72 rapidly began to pick up speed. Nicholas glanced around to see if anyone else had noticed the resounding squeal beneath them. Why were they moving so fast? The other kids exchanged nervous glances as the bus swerved in and out of the lane. They shifted uncomfortably in their seats as trees whipped past them at lightning speed. Lenore had grown pale, but he had yet to acknowledge what was happening. His mind raced as he pumped the brakes to no avail. The bus continued to bolt forward. The younger children had burst into tears, while others were shrieking with terror. The bus was a chaotic frenzy of fear and adrenaline. Around them, the world hurtled past at warp speed. By now, Lenore had lost control of the bus. He helplessly turned the wheel back and forth, but there was nothing he could do to pivot away from the stop sign in front of them. Nicholas had to stay calm. He gripped the seat in front of him so tightly that his knuckles turned white while Lenore desperately tried to regain control of the vehicle. Nicholas pressed his face against the glass, squinting in the distance. Everyone on the bus had been reduced to hysterics. Lenore caught a glimpse of what awaited them and felt his heart sink. The kids on the bus shouted for help, but it was no use. There was nothing anybody could do but prepare themselves for impact. Nicholas's jaw dropped as the reality of their grim situation finally set in. The bus was heading straight for a lake. Everyone screamed as the bus plowed over a stop sign, which crunched beneath its tires. The bus careened toward the open water, veering off the road entirely. They clipped the telephone pole, and Nicholas lurched forward in his seat. The bus teetered back and forth, threatening to flip over at any moment. Lenore gave up on steering the bus, which had taken on a mind of its own. The glistening surface of the lake came barreling toward them. He prepared himself for impact. Nicholas heard screaming as the bus pitched jerkily into the grass. They clipped a palm tree, throwing Nicholas from his seat. Then, without warning, the whole bus was airborne as it sailed toward the lake. Nicholas felt time slow down around them. They were suspended in midair, and time slowed to a crawl. The bus flipped on its side. Nothing could have prepared Nicholas for the impact. The bus hit the water, and Nicholas was slammed against a window. Waves rose around them, and the children were tossed from their seats, wailing with distress. All the air felt like it had left their lungs with one swift punch. Nicholas had no time to gather his bearings. The bus was slowly sinking into the water. 
and he knew that not everyone on board had the ability to swim. Nicholas's brain went into overdrive as the bus began to fill with water from the lake. His head was throbbing from when he smacked it on the glass, but he knew that this was his only chance to get everyone to safety. He waded toward the front of the bus to help the younger children first, since they were less likely to stay afloat on their own. He had no idea that the water was only the beginning of the danger they would face. Nicholas made his way toward the front of the bus, but now the water was almost knee deep. He picked up a crying kindergartner who wrapped her arms around his neck as tightly as she could. He lifted her up and helped her climb through an open window. In only a matter of moments, Nicholas would come face to face with his worst nightmare. The young girl clung to Nicholas as he hurried them both toward the shore. By the time he had finally managed to deposit the girl on dry land, he was out of breath. Nicholas looked back toward the lake and saw something that made him freeze in his tracks. Alligators and crocodiles, two of the most common species in Florida. Nicholas had grown up in the area and frequently saw the deadly creature slithering in and out of the water. He knew that alligator bites were more likely to occur in the water than on land. Nicholas's heart was racing. The older kids had freed themselves from the sinking bus and were swimming in droves toward the shore but the younger children were hardly able to keep their heads above water. Nicholas knew he needed to act fast. He realized that one person in particular hadn't made it off the bus, Lenore. Nicholas took a big breath and jumped into the lake. No one noticed the alligator nearby. If Nicholas shouted about the danger, everyone might panic and some kids could be left behind. Some first and second grade kids were still stuck on the bus, which was filling with water. Nicholas swam back to the bus. He grabbed a first grader and a second grader climbed onto his back. Even though he was small, the excitement gave him strength. Lenore was still on the bus, helping kids get off safely. When it seemed like everyone had made it to shore, Lenore got ready to swim. But just as he was about to reach land, he saw an alligator. He swam faster, trying to get to safety. People gathered by the lake, screaming when they saw the alligator. Finally, Lenore made it back to land and warned everyone about the alligator. Parents arrived, hoping their kids were safe. Upon hearing about the accident, Nicholas's parents, Michael and Deborah, quickly drove to the lake. They embraced him, immensely relieved that he was unharmed. Although all 27 children survived the crash without serious injuries, Nicholas was still haunted by the fear of what could have happened. He might have perished, witnessed the death of his peers, or fallen victim to an alligator attack. The ordeal was too overwhelming to comprehend. Upon arriving home, Nicholas showered, changed into dry clothes, and watched the news. He saw footage of Bus 72 being retrieved from the lake. Right when we hit the water, I felt like I was in a dream, Nicholas recounted to his parents. Nicholas and Lenore were both hailed as heroes for their actions, but the experience was one of the most terrifying they had ever faced. Fortunately, everyone emerged safely from the ordeal.